Matthew Cushing, age 21, was a student at the University of Maine. He was working toward his degree in European history. He lived off campus with several other roommates. Matthew's parents were Christopher Bolduke, age 43, and his mother Carol Bolduke, 42 years old. He had a younger brother, Joshua, age 15. The family lived in their home in Old Orchard Beach, Maine. Old Orchard Beach is a small community where everyone knows everyone. Mostly middle class, with the average age above 50. When Matthew was seven years old he discovered that Christopher was not his biological father. Matthew and his half-brother Joshua were always close. Joshua idolized his older brother because he had so many friends and girlfriends. While at the university, Matthew began drinking heavily and doing drugs. When he ran out of money he would purchase a few bottles of cough syrup and drink them down. During his senior year at the university, he wanted to drop out and travel to England. He discussed this with his parents but his parents did not agree. He ends up saving up his own money to finance his trip, but wastes it all on drugs and alcohol. Around the same time, Matthew suspected that things at home were not going very well. He told friends that his father was wanting to divorce his mother. He also suspected his stepfather was gay and believed his stepfather had been having affairs in the past with men. On February 20th in 2008 Matthew jumped into his car and drove to his family home. He did not park at the family home, instead he parked in town and walked to the home. He expected his stepfather, Christopher to be home, but to his surprise, only his brother Joshua was home. He started discussing the situation with his little brother. He told his brother that if their parents broke up it would destroy their family. Joshua wasn't worried, he felt things would work themselves out. Matthew asked his brother to help him murder their father. When Joshua refused, Matthew became angry and jumped on his brother with a knife, stabbing him over and over. At the same time Carol decided to head home early to spend time with Joshua. On the way home she noticed her older son's car parked at a local dog park. She phoned her husband Christopher to let him know. After Carol arrived home she asked if Matthew was alright, but quickly noticed the cuts on his hands and then noticed he was holding a knife. She attempted to call the police but her son overpowered her. He choked her until she fell unconscious. He then drug her into Joshua's bedroom. He stabbed her in the neck a few times to ensure she was dead. He then used the stun gun on Joshua to make sure he was also dead. He covered them both with towels. After killing his mother, Matthew waited for his stepfather to arrive home. While waiting for him to arrive, he built up anger toward him. He blamed Christopher for the murders. He felt it was all his fault. He felt he deserved to die. As Christopher arrived and entered the door, Matthew tackled him to the floor. He then stabbed and tased him over and over as he cried for help. After murdering his stepfather, he walked down the hallway and went into the room where the family dog, Spike, was kept and stabbed him to death. He then poured gas on all the bodies and set them on fire. After lighting the fire, he jumped into his mother's car and drove back to town and got into his own car and headed back to the university. After leaving, a fire alarm from the home alerted neighbors who quickly called for help. The fire was found quickly and put out by firefighters. When authorities entered the home to search for victims, they found Christopher Bolduke dead on the floor of the dining room with deep lacerations to his neck. When they look further into the home, on a first floor bedroom under a bunch of towels, they locate the body of Joshua Bolduke. On the floor of her son's bedroom is the lifeless body of Carol Bolduke. Her body was partially covered with burnt books and towels. Fire investigators, were able to find two points of origin where the fire was set. A melted red gas container in the floor of the kitchen, 
and accelerant spread in the hallway near Joshua's bedroom. This confirmed that the fire was intentionally set to cover up the murders. Old Orchard Beach did not have the resources to handle a triple murder and arson case, so they contacted the Maine State Police. It became apparent that Christopher's vehicle was in the driveway but Carol's car was missing. Police knew Carol arrived home first so they began searching for her car. It was located close to where Matthew's car was spotted earlier in the day. It was immediately towed for fingerprint and DNA evidence. Police began questioning everyone in town on the day of the murders. Multiple people said they had seen Matthew in town earlier in the day of the murders. Matthew quickly became the main suspect. When the medical examiner performed the autopsies, it was evident that Christopher received the most stab wounds, with 20 stab wounds to his neck, 21 to his stomach, 10 stab wounds to his back and shoulder area, and numerous stab wounds to the face and head. Carol received stab wounds to her neck and face. Joshua received six stab wounds to his forehead, and twice below his left eye, and twice below his right eye, and once in his neck. The medical examiner determined that whoever murdered the Bolduc family overkilled them. In all three, the cause of death was a violent knife attack. When police questioned Matthew they noticed he had fresh cuts on his hands. When questioned about the cuts, Matthew claimed he cut his hands while cutting a thick piece of steak. This gave police probable cause for a search warrant to search his apartment. When they searched his room they found a receipt for taser batteries purchased on the morning of the murders. After a more thorough search they located a backpack with a bloody knife and the stun gun. After the state crime lab finished its testing, it was evident that the blood on the stun gun matched Christopher Bolduc and Matthew, and the blood on the knife came from a mixture of all four family members. On February 22 in 2008, just two days after the murders, Matthew was arrested. He claimed he was innocent. When police confronted him about his DNA in his mother's car he confessed. Prosecutors believe the crime was premeditated. He did internet searches about how to kill people with a knife and where the best stab points would be. He also purchased a taser a month before the murders. He also showed up at the home with a knife and a taser. He had an hour between each killing, proving that his actions were thought out and methodical. During the investigation it came out through interviews with friends and co-workers that Christopher Bolduc was gay. He was planning to divorce his wife, and move to South Carolina to live with another man. At Matthew Cushing's apartment police discovered notebooks where he wrote about having a deep hatred for homosexuals. On February 5 in 2009 Matthew Cushing pled guilty to three counts of murder and one count of arson. On March 26 in 2009 he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In an interview after his sentencing he said he had been thinking of killing people for a long time. He said he worried that his stepfather was going to leave his mother and brother and it weighed heavily on him. Matthew has been asked about why he killed the family dog and he said, people asked me all the time about our family dog, and they say, did you really have to kill the dog? And I say, listen, I don't mean to sound like a monster, but I just killed my brother, my mother, and my father. Do you really think I give a damn about the dog? Matthew Cushing remains incarcerated at Maine State Prison in Warren, Maine where he will spend the rest of his life. Kevin Milazzo, 41 years old, lives in Corsicana, Texas. Corsicana is a city in Navarro County, about 50 miles southeast of Dallas. Milazzo had a criminal history as well as mental health issues. He was arrested numerous times from 1999 through 2020 with various charges such as resisting arrest, driving while intoxicated, unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon, assaulting a family member causing bodily harm, terroristic threatening, aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury, 
burglary, driving with suspended license, misdemeanor drug possession, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He was in and out of jail and paroled several times, most recently on October 3rd in 2021. He was divorced with several children ranging in ages. On February 5th, in 2022 his son, 21-year-old Joshua Milazzo was supposed to take him to a treatment facility when both were reported missing by Joshua's mother. Her five-year-old son came home telling her he witnessed something horrific. She immediately called 911. When Corsicana police arrived at the home located at the 2900 block of West 2nd Avenue they found Kevin Milazzo's mother and stepfather, William Mims, age 68, and Connie Mims, age 61, both deceased from multiple guns shot wounds. The Mims' adult daughter was suffering from gunshot wounds and rushed to the hospital. When officers arrived at the second location near the intersection of Garrity and Stroud Street in Frost, Texas, they found Joshua Milazzo dead by gunshot wounds. Four-year-old Hunter Freeman was also found shot to death. He was the young son of Kevin Milazzo's ex-girlfriend, Patty Freeman. She was also found with multiple gunshot wounds and rushed to Dallas Trauma Center. Joshua's younger brother, 20-year-old Xavier Milazzo was also found with multiple gunshot wounds. He was rushed by air ambulance to Dallas Area Trauma Center. Authorities were able to track Milazzo's vehicle through its GPS navigation system. Officers searched and intercepted his vehicle on Farm to Market Road 1129, just south of Roan Road. Law enforcement had the monitoring service to remotely turn off the vehicle's engine, which forced the vehicle to abruptly stop. When SWAT officers approached the vehicle they found Milazzo critically injured from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. He was rushed to a nearby hospital, where he was pronounced dead. When police searched the vehicle they located a handgun and a rifle. They believe the handgun was used during the killings. Milazzo was a convicted felon and not supposed to own any firearms. Both guns were legally owned by someone else, it's unclear who those guns belonged to. Police said Xavier Milazzo, 20, died around 10 p.m. on February 7 after he was disconnected from life support at John Peter Smith Hospital. In December 2020, Connie Mims wrote on Facebook, Please pray for all of us. Especially Kevin, he is in a bad place. A friend asked, What is wrong with him Connie? She replied, Satan. To another friend she responded, On antibiotics, Kevin needs God, Satan torments him. In 2014, she wrote, 33 years ago I gave birth to my only son Kevin. It's been a ride to remember. Some ups, some downs, but I wouldn't give you up for nothing. Little four-year-old Hunter Freeman was considered a miracle child. His mother, Patty, was told she could never have children. When she finally was able to get pregnant, she nearly lost him, when he was born early weighing only three pounds and eight ounces, but he beat the odds and survived. A friend of Patty's told reporters, Patty knew that she wanted to give Hunter a good life and him not suffer the hardships she had to endure throughout her life, so she decided to do everything she could to give him that chance. Kelly Calloway of New Century Hospice said she and Freeman were very close friends. The two met a few days each week to share morning coffee and talk about life. She said, she loved her little boy so much. We are all still in shock over this terrible loss. Jennifer Tatum, Director of Business Development at Legacy Rehabilitation and Healthcare said she's known Freeman for years. She said, her son Hunter was her entire world. She is a good person with a great heart. She worked hard to put herself through medical assistant school, so to see this happen to her is very senseless and difficult. Patty Freeman worked as an assistant to the medical director of Corsicana's health care agencies, which treats over 3,000 patients. The tragedy shocked the town of Corsicana. Pastors Lonnie and Debbie Keel knew Connie and Bill Mims for more than two decades. 
The couple attended their church for nearly 25 years. Wiping away tears the keels, said the couple did not deserve this. They described the act as being pure evil, and whoever did it was someone with a sick mind. William and Connie Mims' funeral services were held on February 11th at Community Chapel Church. The couple were buried at Frost Cemetery. Funeral services for Joshua and Xavier Milazzo were held on February 19th at Community Chapel Church. Hunter Freeman's funeral services was held on February 24th at Griffin Roten Funeral Home. Kevin Milazzo had a lengthy history of criminal behavior, including physically harming family members. He was in and out of jail throughout the years. When the courts ordered him to enter treatment did he devise a plan that would involve his entire family, kill them all? Or was it a spur-of-the-moment thing after a possible argument? He murdered his mother, stepfather, two of his children, and a four-year-old boy that belonged to his ex-girlfriend. He also wounded others before taking his own life. We will never truly know why he decided to murder his family, but one thing is clear, when someone can murder not only their own mother and children, but a four-year-old child who wasn't even his biological child, that person is pure evil. Matthew was angry over his mother and stepfather's looming divorce, and his stepfather being a homosexual. His anger escalated with his drug use. Instead of talking with his parents like a normal person would do, he planned and carried out their murders. His actions proved that beneath his skin lurks a cold-hearted monster who deserves far more than our justice system can ever dish out. May all the victims in this case rest in peace. That concludes this episode, keep your eye out for the next volume coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. to help support the channel you love and get something in return simply purchase some elizabeth's chronicles merch we have coffee mugs t-shirts sweatshirts cozy blankets beach towels phone covers and more use the coupon code ec10off4u and get 10 percent off your order the link to order is in the description area below this video Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.